The Cincinnati Hawk of Sister City Partnership, a mouthful commonly known as CKSCP, operates today on its original vision of a friendly and productive relationship with Kharkov, the Cincinnati area's sister city in Ukraine. CKSCP fosters a climate of goodwill, understanding, and cooperation between the people of Cincinnati and the people of Kharkov. Cincinnati started considering a sister city relationship in the Soviet Union in the mid-1980s. With President Reagan calling the Soviet Union the evil empire, the proposal seemed a bit far-fetched. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Then, launching an idea he called glasnost, openness, Gorbachev tore down the wall. Not yet the Berlin Wall, but the wall between the Soviet people and Americans. He was seen as a real change agent, and of course, well, it was 89, we were, the year we actually formally signed it was when the wall came down. So this was all going on in terms of breaking down barriers. In the late 80s, most of Harkovites never heard of Cincinnati. Most people have never talked to an American, have never seen an American, and it was absolutely out of people's um, realm. They didn't even imagine that it could happen. Cincinnati chose Kharkov as its sister city. Kharkov seemed strange at first, but has become familiar and dear to many of us. Kharkov has about the same population as the Cincinnati metropolitan area. It also has institutions of higher learning. It has industry. Rivers run through the city, and agricultural lands surround it. CKSCP became a reality on September 11, 1989, marked by the handshakes of mayors and a groundbreaking Memorandum of Understanding, specifying areas of cooperation. All the people involved with our organization, with Kharkiv, we're very keen on having a very broad-based um, exchange of ideas and programs. Well, the Memorandum of Understanding was a document that went, was negotiated each year between Kharkiv and Cincinnati and signed by both parties, um, outlining all of the areas of exchange for the upcoming year. We were recognized as the only sister city pair in the world that was doing something like this. After the handshakes and paperwork, the Cincinnati Harkov relationship developed exactly as envisioned by President Eisenhower when he established the Sister Cities program in 1956 with its spotlight on direct people to people diplomacy. How do we strengthen friendships? How do we learn of others? But I am talking about the exchange of professors and students and executives. We have youth and education exchanges. We have professional exchanges in the field of medicine and law. Uh, we had business and trade ventures, but perhaps the one we're most well known for is our cultural exchange. We've had performing artists, dance and music groups, uh, graphic artists, photographers. We had education, we had substance abuse, we had architects, we had you know, just all a myriad of uh, musicians and artists and, you know, sports and just all sorts of things. Uh, and everyone was cooking up something. I am very glad that relations between Cincinnati and Kharkiv are developing and they are filled with new meaning. With all those exchanges and people going back and forth, it was extremely exciting and, and, and uh, well, it changed all of us. Мы узнаем больше друг о друге, и это только будет способствовать тому, чтобы мы дружили и чтобы был мир на планете. There will be more exchanges on uh, from children to uh, to adults to cultural exchanges, uh, and that's going to bring both societies closer and closer each day. It really provides uh, a very 
concrete, real sort of way for you know, people who oftentimes are of very different cultures and very different backgrounds to actually engage with uh, other you know, people in other cultures and other places in a way that's very real and, and brings about long-standing, lasting relationships. You know, this was a citizen-to-citizen -citizen thing. This is not uh, international politics. This is people getting to know each other in a very interesting moment in history. It's just a tremendous outpouring of, uh, of interest and exploration between what had been two societies that had had very little to do with each other. You know, it was just a, really a flowering of, uh, of good spirit on all sides. It was embraced, not as much by the government as it was by people in Cincinnati, groups, young people. I mean, they were the energy in those first years behind the exchanges that happened. That was really a hopping sister city relationship. When we Cincinnatians went to Harkov, it seemed everyone wanted to meet us, feed us, and entertain us. We were celebrities. Everywhere we went, people knew who we were. Here in Cincinnati, we welcomed Harkovites into our homes in CKSCP's signature home hosting tradition. The hosting, I think that's what we enjoy the most. We actually were learning a different culture. We're learning what their lifestyle is and what their problems are and uh, what their family life is like. And it's, uh, it's just, it's been very uh, rewarding. We had a piano in our house and all of a sudden we're sitting there one day and all we hear this beautiful music coming out of the piano and I looked over and she's playing. When you get to know people on a one-to-one -one basis, you find out that we're all alike, really. While I have put a lot into it in years past, I know I've gotten a lot more out of it from the friendships that have been made. Very soon, an extraordinary thing happened there was just a similarity of soul or an instant bonding that went on. Uh, I, I had people from Cincinnati and from Kharkiv said that it just immediately felt like they were family. There's some kind of a, a chemistry between the people in Cincinnati and the people in Kharkiv. Two years into the Cincinnati-Kharkiv relationship, a historic event took place. The Soviet Union broke into 15 countries, resulting in Cincinnati's having a sister city in the newly independent country of Ukraine. We learned to call our sister city by a slightly different name. What an outstanding opportunity for CKSCP to be part of its sister city's transition from communism to democracy and free enterprise. CKSCP takes part in U.S. government-funded programs bringing many Harkovites to Cincinnati to learn about how to help their city function within its new framework. These were grants from the U.S. government, but you have to apply first. Tell them all the great things about Cincinnati and, and why Cincinnati should be chosen because we're competing with people in sister cities and groups all across the country. There is this you know, tremendous hunger for knowledge in Ukraine, for you know, best practices. But Kharkiv wanted specific knowledge, and it, it really, uh, I think, helped them. The idea of nonprofit organizations, for example, was a very new one when we, uh, when we began working with them. I mean, I have been, you know, down under looking at the sewers, and I've been up on the top of Rumpke Dump, and I've been uh, all through the police stations. I've been to the schools, been to um, meetings at City Hall. We got a grant for transparency and openness, um, which involved the police department. Ukraine has grown up. Um, it still has uh, issues, um, and a lot of those have to do with how they're going to govern, how they are governing. In a long-time multi-dimensional cooperation, the Cincinnati Harkov Sister City Partnership has opened opportunities in many areas. We have exchanged arts and culture. At the International Friendship Park on the Ohio River, you can see the column decorated by a Harkov ceramics artist, 
as part of the Clay, Color and Fire project. Kharkiv is considered to be one of the um, centers of fine art photography in Eastern Europe. Dozens of people traveled between the two cities uh, as artists, exhibitors, curators. About 20 exhibits took place in both cities. Uh, so this is something that became a strong component of the uh, sister city relationship. All these women came with medals and nothing I had read had said that women had been in combat in the Soviet Union in World War II. But almost a million were in, in combat, the largest mobilization of women and girls in history. The women were thrilled that the Americans were interested. And I really value their trust, that they trusted me with their story. Their courage, their heroism, the giving up their youth, their patriotism, those are all touching things that I will carry with me forever. Exchanges have addressed important social issues. CKSCP helped religious communities bloom after 70 years of official atheism. And that became a number one priority to get the synagogue that had been confiscated back into the hands of the Jewish community of Kharkiv and they had used it as a wrestling camp. You know, there were barbells and mats, and, but it was not even a, a sports center that was in good repair. It was just a big, messy old gym. Our request was that the city return, it, return that building to the Jewish community. It has been returned. There is a functioning Jewish community there. Without the Sister City Project, and I could ne not, never have accomplished what we accomplished together. We were impressed by what had been accomplished, yet even more impressed by the enormity of what still remains to be done to rebuild a heritage so badly neglected and damaged. Through a State Department grant, we helped Harkov women fight skyrocketing domestic violence during the chaotic years immediately following independence. The most visible results were women's shelters, and passage of national domestic violence legislation. Most people did not perceive domestic violence as a legal issue, as a general societal problem. They thought that was a, that's inside our house. Through these communications and through our exchanges, they could leapfrog, or at least they could move forward more quickly. I've done a lot of different works, a lot of community work in, in my life, and I think this is one I feel um, is most valuable. Youth exchanges have brought understanding to the next generation. To welcome them into our homes, to meet them in a classroom, or see them in the cafeteria and eat lunch with them, that opens the door to increased understanding and increased familiarity. Ukraine is a country of the blue sky and yellow wheat fields. And once the familiarity is established, then the door starts to open wider and you can see the relationships starting to form. Nativity gives us a chance to understand that this world is a beautiful one and we live here to make friends and to understand that we are all just common people. One of the highlights, I think, of my uh, 25 years uh, was working with the, the teen exchange and they were allowed to go to orphanages and, and teach volunteerism over there. So I had these kids draw pictures. What did they want to say to kids over here? So I've got these pictures I, I made into a couple of exhibits. Uh, I've got a girl who drew a cottage with a Kalina tree outside with the berries. And this boy drew a picture of a globe. And he had the US on one side, and he had Ukraine on the other side, and a space shuttle going between them. Useful ideas have been implemented in peer-to-peer -peer professional exchanges. Ideas from Cincinnati helped with remodeling of the Harkov Zoo. 
help Tarkov introduce energy efficiency technologies, and help Tarkov food manufacturers fortify flour and restore iodine to table salt. And then I'd walk down the street and people would stop me and say, I'm using iodized salt again on my ta table. You should be pleased. I guess I am pleased. Sports exchanges featured recreation, fitness, and competition. And uh, I had the sports committee. And one of my first uh, bits of work on that was uh, organizing a bicycle exchange between a, a cycling club in Harkeef and the Cincinnati Cycle Club. We have initiated relationships, linkages, progress. CKSCP has built a heritage of connection through mutual interests and personal friendships. New opportunities to connect people will bring the organization into the future. There is lots of future and uh, the potential is absolutely endless. Uh, the key to this relationship is for ordinary Cincinnatians and Harkovites to get involved, participate, and make our relationship special. I think we've made a difference, I really do. The most worthwhile purpose there is in the world today, to help build the road to peace. To help build the road to an enduring peace. <laughs> Yeah.